Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here is not easily found anywhere else on YouTube. In aircraft structural design, there is a number that is a starting point of every design, the load factor. The load factor is defined as lift divided by weight and it is often measured in Gs, which is equal to the weight of the aircraft. A 1.1 G's turn, fairly normal in commercial aviation, means that the lift is 10% higher than the weight. The higher the lift, the tighter is the turn, all else being equal. The 4th and 4.5 generation fighters have mostly been designed to pull up to 9 G's in order to outfight the opponent in an air combat engagement. For the previous generation of fighters, like the Viggen, 7 to 8 G was the rule. The same generation has been designed for longer service lives, typically by a factor of two or even more, going up from 1800 to 2100 hours for the Viggen to 4000 or 6000 hours for the generation 4.5. So the demand on the structural engineers to keep the aircraft together have certainly not decreased. Carbon fiber composites seem to offer a way out for all the tough demands put up on the new fighter in the early 80s. In-house research at Saab and by outside partners in this field had been running for more than a decade. So the type of material was considered mature enough at the time of the grip and preliminary design. The carbon fiber composite proved itself to be a high strength construction material of low weight but with higher costs compared to conventional aluminum designs. The Gripen's delta wing offers a light but strong and stiff structure in conjunction with the use of carbon fiber on the outside skins and main spars, even when the relative thickness of the wing is small. The problem of stiffness is vital, as the single spar aluminum winch Viggen had shown years before. If a wing is not stiff enough, aileron reversal may occur, and if this happens while rolling at low altitude, it may be fatal. Saab, at the time, was wise enough to tackle the problem by creating a mixed development group composed with aerodynamics designers and structural engineers. Flight mechanics simulations very early in the project had established the required minimum values for the flex to rigid ratio of the rolling moment to the aileron deflection for meeting the very stringent supersonic roll rate demands. The wing carbon fiber structure designed with the help of British Aerospace turned out to be fully up to the expectations. So the grip and wing is a multi-spar single upper and lower skin design with three fuselage main fittings blended into a mid-wing body position. A delta wing also offers a fairly large volume for fuel and has in general good static and dynamic aeroelastic properties, even with large external stores on the wing pylons. Careful error ruling was adhered to during the design phase and the cooperation between aerodynamicists and airframe design engineers was always very close. An example was the front fuselage that was circular in shape initially, but it was redesigned with an elliptical geometry. Significant gains in wave drag and also high angle of attack behavior were achieved at the cost of increasing the manufacturing costs. Obviously, not everything went well the first time. Early into the design phase, an alum over rising supersonic drag became strong enough. An optimistic goal of a 25% reduction was identified. A significant reduction of the maximum cross-section area and a corresponding lengthening of the fuselage to increase the slenderness ratio was found beneficial, but this meant redesigning a very large portion of the aircraft structure. During subsequent development, the goal could not be fully realized as compromises always have to be made in the design process. However, early flight testing confirmed that the drag reduction predictions were met and the long tail cone became one of the Gripen's landmark features. 
If you have found this video interesting, I'm sure you will be interested in the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar and Patreon, that would be amazing. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very much for watching. Stay safe and see you next time.